Okay, it's four after. I think we can probably get started. Um, so thanks everybody for joining the CNF Working Group meeting. Uh, we meet every Monday at 1600 UTC. Uh, in case you missed it, there's a link to the meeting minutes in the chat. If you can just add your name, that would be great. Um, and then before we get started, is there anything that anyone would like to add, the, add to the agenda? Okay, hearing nothing, I think we can probably jump right in then. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll just, can I add an, a very small thing to agenda, just a, a quick update on the network orchestration uh, task force. Sure, do you, do you mind if I add it here or do you wanna have it at the beginning? Do you wanna do it now or later? Uh, your choice. <laughs> okay, you can go first if you want. Okay, sure, so um, some of you, Maybe even all of you, if I'm looking at the list here, know, but there's a there's a new uh, Slack channel on CNCF called uh, TUG <laughs> um, Networking Orchestration. Um, so the discussions have been in the context of the tug, but uh, it was clear that you know there's a lot of overlap both in uh, things people uh, work on and uh, the people themselves, and uh, I think after a fruitful conversation, we decided that best place to start the work would be under the CNF working group with its governance. And uh, so, so, so yeah, I, I had a personal meeting uh, with Taylor and uh, we worked some th stuff out and uh, hopefully this week I'll have time to really uh, flesh it out on the GitHub repo and we can start to work. So not a lot to say today other than that. <laughs> And maybe the next uh, CNF work group, I might have something more to add to the agenda and uh, get into more details. Uh, but for now, probably the best way to continue working is on Slack. I know Slack isn't uh, accessible to absolutely everybody. So if you, if Slack isn't great for you and you do want to be involved, uh, please let me know and I'll try to figure out some way to, uh, to include you. The idea is to be inclusive, not exclusive. Uh, that's it. I can add a little bit to that, Tal. Um, and Bill, could I share my screen real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. All right. So the main thing um, that we were trying to work on was breaking down what are all the different parts of, of what we want to accomplish across in the orchestration, but then looking at all the different groups. And so as far as what you could do getting started, we think the requirements, definitions, and gap analysis are in scope um, for the CNF working group. And we're talking about either current or new Kubernetes technology and uh, past and current non-Kubernetes. So that would be thinking anything outside we could say legacy, but not all of it. There's new stuff happening. And then specifically like presenting solutions, these could be um, maybe outside, maybe inside of the CNF work group. Some of it could be the telecom user group, but the parts that we think we could get started immediately as far as the GitHub repo for CNF working group would be around requirements, definitions, and gap analysis. Um, we broke a lot of this down. I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, that'll be something I think you'll see as we move forward. But that uh, would be the main areas. And Tal, and would you agree that kind of covers what uh, the, the highlights at the top? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the reason I didn't want to get into the details of this is that um, this could easily take the whole agenda. So. Um, it, it, it's a starting point. I, I'll, I'll put something on the Slack maybe. Hopefully this week more people can look at this, provide feedback, and uh, maybe next uh, work group meeting we could uh, do something more productive. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is, I think, a really great opening shot. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, I, I treat these things as buckets of work <laughs> where I think many different people in the group can uh, 
contribute. So um, I, I, I'm optimistic. I, I think this could be a very productive uh, endeavor. Absolutely. And that's um, the idea that we're trying to do with on the how the structuring specifically on the CNF working group, but ideally any of the different groups, wherever you're passionate about working, you hopefully you find a place you can just focus. You will not just focus, but you can focus on that and not think that you need to cover all the things. So the different buckets, I'm going to hand it back to you, Bill. Cool. Thanks Taylor. And thanks Tal. Um, so Looking forward to the PRs uh, that are gonna be incoming. And if you want to dive more into the networking orchestration task force, uh, join the Slack, the link is here or reach out to uh, Tal directly. And I think his email is here um, if you wanna reach out to him. So thank you. Um, the next one is this pull request uh, from Taylor, adding a code of conduct. So um, essentially, this is just saying that the CNF working group will follow the CNCF code of conduct. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, unless anybody has any major objections to this, I think we can probably merge this as everyone has agreed so far. Any last objections? Okay, great. So now we have a code of conduct. Perfect, so thanks for that, Taylor. Um, next one is from Ruben. Is he on the call today? I don't see him on the call today, um, but essentially, uh, what this pull request is, is in the charter also adding for operations of CNFs, adding uh, the lifecycle management component. Um, so instead of just deploying and managing, really looking at the whole lifecycle management. So deployment, configuration, management, upgrade. Uh, so we opened this last week. I think there's quite a few um, approvals here, unless there's any last objections on this call. I'll also merge this too now. Three, two, one, okay, great. So thanks everybody who took the time to review that too. Um, the next one I'd like to point out, um, as Taylor said earlier, there's multiple ways to get involved in the project um, beyond just some of the core stuff. And so part of it is to create a contributing document. And I know Taylor has started doing this, but if there's anybody that's interested in uh, working on this with him, I, I mark this as a good first issue. Um, so if anybody wants to raise their hand on the call or anything else, uh, you, you, you can do that now or look into it later. So I'll just see if anybody's interested in adding the name now. Or you can also add your name later. Um, so there, otherwise, um, I know Taylor's putting something together right now. So, okay. Um, last week, uh, we talked a little bit, uh, just like as a refresher, um, is that we, sh we need to update the template around the user stories, um, that the user stories should not be marked optional. Um, and saying if there's none, you should start a GitHub discussion. Caveat shouldn't be optional and, there's, and it should be renamed to trade-offs. And so uh, thanks to Watson, he's made a pull request here, just um, giving these updates essentially. So the pull request is linked here. Um, just essentially, um, so changing user stories from optional, since that's gonna be a category for us, changing notes to trade-offs constraints and like caveats. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty straightforward small pull request. So if anybody, I know this is just committed three hours ago, so I'll leave it up for another week, but if anybody wants to review it or wants me to add them now as a reviewer, I can do that.
Neil, uh, you can put my name there, Victor Morales. Okay, thanks. And also Robbie said in the chat, so thank you. Okay, so I added both of you as reviewers and obviously anybody is free to review it. Um, so thanks, so we'll leave that one open for now, but I, I think we can probably get that merged pretty easily next by next week, it's pretty small change. Um, the next one, oh, sorry, I just wanna take a pause. Does anybody have any questions on what we've done so far? Okay, then the next one is creating templates for use cases. Um, so just as a reminder, last week we uh, merged in the, the, the kind of, you could think of like the table of contents for the use cases document. And one of the comments there is that we should have a template for use cases. And this is kind of the discussion out of there. Um, and so if anybody else is looking for a good first issue to jump in on is to create like a template for these use cases. Um, if anybody wants to raise their hand right now in the meeting, I'm happy to assign you or people can self assign after the meeting too. Uh, Bill, uh, book is speaking. I could take that one. Okay. For the use cases. Okay. Great. Thanks, book. So you have been assigned and looking forward to the pull request on that one. Uh, unless, is there anything you want to discuss about it right now? Are you happy to um, go off and just kind of create an initial template and then have the yeah, discussion? I'll I'll create initial draft template uh, uh, based on some ideas uh, and, and practice. Uh, um, I use them in and uh, will uh, create a merge request to, to be reviewed and then discussed. Okay. So that's awesome. fine Thank for me. Awesome. Thank you very much. Really appreciate uh, that. A follow up on the template. If, if um, before we have a template decided on, if you have, um, a use a use case or a user story which is higher level um that you want to talk about then feel free to create a discussion you don't have to wait for some, having a bunch of content we can add a new discussion or add to the discussion list just the idea yeah and maybe that's a good time i'll actually go a little bit out of order here is actually to go to the BGP use case um, because this is one of the use case. So if, is Ian on the call? Um, I am, yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm not, by the way, terribly proud of this. I wrote it in an hour this morning um, and got up especially early so it was ready for you. But uh, um, Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a beginning at least. Um, so it, it was one example. I've seen this before. Um, uh, and the reason I've used this specific example is because it requires um, a second VRF on the network, um, which highlights a, um, a shortcoming that we run into. Um, so it, it's just um, an example of how I might put a BGP speaker on. And what I want it to do is talk to my um, uh, customers VPN network, so a network that I have access to, but I don't want its management to be on the customer network. I want it to be managed independently. Um, it's <sighs> Taylor's telling me off for not putting this in as a discussion, and he's got a point because it's as vague as anything, and we don't have a, a, a use case template yet. And I could probably have waited for that and done a better job of it. But the, the thing I was running into is it really did feel like it needed a document to discuss so that people could point to the document and say, this is a thing I don't like very much about the way that this is put together. I'm quite happy to withdraw the pull request if it turns out it's too early and it's the wrong thing to do. But for the time being, I would at least give it a once over and read it and see what you think. Um, what I was trying to say with this, as I say, is um, here is a straightforward use case and again, arguably not the right place for it. Here are set reasons why it's problematic as we stand, where, where we find that we're getting into some difficulty, which again, arguably isn't really correct for putting into a use case. But um, I assume everybody that's seen it, which is probably about two people at this point, 
appreciates that it's a, a, a reasonable problem description that it is a thing that does come up. Great, thank you for creating this. Um, so Vuk, do you mind if I like add you as a reviewer on here just so that as you're going through and creating the template, you can kind of see what you think is good, what do you, what do you think is missing? And you, I think you can kind of yeah. work with you a little bit on this kind of as a collaborate, creating the template and actually having like a real use case. Yeah, sure. It's, okay. uh, it's a good to uh, base it on some uh, concrete content and then see what fits, what doesn't fit. Um, yeah. Just to that concrete uh, use case, uh, I just want to mention we have uh, cases where we uh, talk about seven VRFs yep. uh, to plump and so on. So that's. If you uh, can the... give a better example of this or a different example that comes from your perspective, I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, I know full well we've got use cases where we want more than one VPN as well, but they get more than one VRF, but they get complicated to explain. So I thought I'd start with the simple one, which points out a shortcoming. And then we can, you know, if we if we can come up with a better, again, concrete example of it happening and why you would want to do it, then we can we can write another one as well. There's nothing wrong with one feature solving multiple use cases. Uh, sure, I just wanted to mention that uh, it is uh, uh, it is reality, and uh, one aspect uh, uh, or one way to look at it is how can you uh, resolve it on Kubernetes level. Another is uh, what we are trying to do actually is how uh, we can resolve it on uh, uh, data center fabric and uh, integration of that fabric into into wide area network uh, level, so that we offload everything to move everything from <laughs> Kubernetes clusters into into the fabric as much as possible. But yeah, it was yeah. a side I mean, comment only. No, I agree. Right, um, and again. Um, well, so that's that's where this document has a problem because one half of that is a use case and one half of that is implementation problems. But I absolutely agree. I see exactly the same shortcoming and it's a thing that I want to see fixed. So uh, anything that points in that direction is going to help us kind of flesh out what we would need to fix it. I think that's great. Ian, would you um, mind trying to add this as a discussion with your slide with the diagram as well we don't have to close the pull request out but just duplicate it i'm interested in seeing what it would look like with the diagram embedded um that's an interesting question let's see what happens uh, that diagram by the way i did it in uh, draw.io and it's an editable draw.io diagram um it's svg i'm sure it would work with png as well just Think of it as another experiment. All right, and the the discussion forum can also link, or the discussion topic could link to the pull request, and then once you know, if, if we get it merged, then it can link to the document. But the discussion might be a area to have like larger uh, conversations about that document, but keep it in the Git repo. Um, Cool. So thanks, Ian, for putting this um, together. And I'm looking forward to seeing kind of like this first use case kind of come together and sparking some discussion around there. Um, then. Bila. Yeah. I have a question. What is the expectation on the use case? Um, I'm asking because I'm, I'm at this point a bit um, lost um, um, as, to, as to where to start uh, if I wanted to send me one and, and exactly how, how what to draw out of that use case. Um, I, I might have missed that from earlier meetings, but I, I appreciate if maybe you can explain again. Are you asking um, what a use case should contain or what is the purpose that we're uh, for the CNF working group, what, like why are we trying to have the use cases? Yes, that one more. I mean, okay. I understand why we do use case based, right? But but where yeah, do we want for the CNF working group? So uh, um, the it ties back to so that right now the pre, the focus is to get towards best practices or techniques. How are you going to utilize 
if you're on a Kubernetes-based platform, then how can you take advantage of service capabilities? How are you going to have apps, uh, networking apps, that can utilize maybe other networking applications? So what are best practices in Kubernetes? That's mm -hmm. what we had uh, talked about for the CNF working group. But if you don't have some type of real world context, then it makes it difficult to even talk about those. So the idea with a use case, I'm gonna make an even simpler one than, uh, thank you Ian for doing the BGP. We've been talking about it for months. Um, an even simpler one would be like a bump in the wall, uh, firewall, bump in the wire. So you have a firewall uh, CNF that's just sitting there. And that one, we could take and then break down what is the behavior and features. It's small enough that we can talk about how we would expect it to act if you're deploying it and break those features down to a point where we can say, okay, here's, here's how we would expect to manage it from the lifecycle management. What are the different aspects? Here's how, it, if you're a developer and doing developing a firewall that's gonna just sit in the wire, transparent firewall, passing traffic, then what are some things that you could do to make it easier to develop and deploy, like thinking from a, a developer standpoint. So that if we have the use case, then we can analyze it and then start saying, well, what are the things that we could do in Kubernetes that would be mm -hmm. helpful? Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, anything, these use cases I think are gonna be useful outside of that focus. And, you know, there's some things that may go, this should go to the tug or we should go talk to the network plumbing group and, and Kubernetes or some other SIG or the uh, multi-cluster, whatever it may be. But within the CNF working group, that would be the focus. And what would you recommend in order to discuss that without necessarily going fully in for a pull request? I mean, you were saying best is to start via the discussions, right? I'd say it's how sure are you on what <laughs> if there's, you know, Ian I'm put something sure out and arguably it could go either way. Um, I'd say with the amount of content that he has and we don't have a template, but if, if you, there's, let's see, there's one of them, networking use cases and user stories right there. So this one, this is just a long list essentially this is whatever idea that you have if you don't have enough content but you're like we should take a look at this then feel free to add it here and and then we can get started and then if if you say i have a little bit of content but i don't feel like i have enough to fully define it then maybe start a new discussion and that way we can start adding more and more to it and of course we can come back and talk about uh reference and then if you feel like you have enough content, some diagrams, and there's enough content that we can actually examine, then that would be create a pull request. But if you're not sure, just go with one and then we can talk about it, yeah, what, wherever, wherever you think. That works. Thanks for gently taking my hand. <laughs> no problem. It's all new for all of us, this area. Now, this is all work in progress, so I think we're all trying to figure it out at the same time. Um, so, okay, we've done everything else up above. Um, next thing that um, is quite exciting is the governance PR. Um, so, this is the different roles of people, because uh, obviously Taylor and I have helped set this up, but we'd really like this to be the community led and governed initiative going forwards. And so just to kind of give people a preview, what this PR is, is setting up basically the, the different roles. So the chairs, the technical leads and everyone else. Um, so basically lays out what the chair, the technical leads and what other people do. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to open this up for conversation. I know there's quite a few approvals already, but if anybody wants to make any last comments on this or has anything else they'd like to add, like please feel free to um, say it now.
Okay, hearing nothing, I think it's time to merge this. Also, um, you know, I saw that you added this here and we discussed it. Um, unless anybody has any objections, like I'd be fine with also committing this um, rather than making it a separate PR. Unless anybody has really strong objections to that. Ian's just adding Cisco as one of the interested parties. So this is. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I know it could be another poll request. It just didn't seem particularly necessary. And the, the list of companies there, clearly Jeff and Daniel got to this first. And so there are two. But um, I, I think the other thing is, if there's anybody else who wants adding to this, um, speak now or for her of your piece. And then we can just basically alter this right this second. Yeah, so this is just a reminder, since as we are trying to set up um, kind of more formalized governance and, and everything, we like to go to the like the TOC or other groups and say, these are all the interested parties. And this is like our governance, just that we're kind of like a more formal body, um, kind of in line with what uh, everybody else in the ecosystem is doing. And this is just one part of it. So if your company is interested, please feel free to add it here. Um, maybe quick question about this. Uh, going back to the networking orchestration task force, um, if, it, if it will be under the CNF working group umbrella, um, should it be formalized in some way regarding uh, membership here as a, a tech lead or for a specific topic? I, I'm just not sure what, what the best uh, way to handle it would be. Bill, um, if you'll click on the other view, the little for the instead of the diff, do the other view. Yeah. Okay. And then this everyone else members. I th uh, yeah. There we go. So I'd say for right now, let's just keep it um, under this area. So there's essentially on all members, um, we can create other roles that aren't part of the charter. I don't think that we need to create defined charter roles for the task force right now, but we can just say we are we have a task force that's looking into this within the group. And anyone that wants to do that, we, we say, okay, well, you know, Tal, right now you're um, helping to lead this task force and wh whoever else wants to step up. But I would put that under that all members and that specifically that second bullet point under all members. Um, we can have other roles and they're just not a defined role in the charter. Uh, now, sure, yeah, you, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. go ahead. I, I guess, yeah, I, I wasn't suggesting that we need additional roles. I was wondering how it would fit in the roles. Um, so I, you know, I'll, ste I'll step up if it's needed to become a tech lead or something else, but I'm absolutely fine if, if uh, it could be just an everyone else category for now. Yeah, for now, I don't, I don't think we need to define that. And the tech lead, I mean, it could very well be under there, but, you know, if um, the, the goal is here soon, we're going to request again some uh, uh, nominate, self nominations are going to happen, but that's tech lead for all of the CNF working group. I see. And then um, versus the task force. All right, thanks, that's clear. Okay, and just um, since we will be doing self nominations, I'm just gonna like quickly like skim through the different roles that people like are familiar with them. Um, so the chairs is gonna be three chairs, one from the Kubernetes community, one from the service provider and one from the CNF developer and just to know like the primary role of chairs is to run the operations and governance of the groups. That's like things like setting and just uh, agendas, managing the discussions, starting the scheduling discussions for proposals, asking new things and working with the tech leads to establish the roadmap. Whereas the tech lead is really kind of the people that are experts in networking telcos, Kubernetes and want to provide like the technical leadership to produce the outputs of the CNF working group. Um, so that's kind of the, the divide between the two roles. Um, and so the tech leads are really 
deeply diving into like the, the project. Um, but also, um, I guess going to the conversation we just had is that membership is self-declared. There's no membership requirements to be part of it and it's open uh, public open working group. So if you want to contribute, you don't need to be in one of these roles to contribute. So you don't feel like uh, if I don't get one of these roles, I, there's no place for me in the CNF working group. It's absolutely open to everyone. And so these are just a little providing a little bit structure, but not they're not the only ways that you can work within this group. Um, so if there's no further discussion, um, I'll merge these and then What's going to happen after this is um, we're going to come up with a um, voting PR, just that there's a structure around how we're voting. And in the meantime, we'll have a self-nomination period. And so this will um, be opened on the mailing list. So anybody can nominate them. There'll be a little bit of a structure saying like who you are, um, what you're nominating yourself for, and it'll be open until March 1st. Then we'll probably have <clears throat> sorry, a voting period for two weeks after that. So we expect to have uh, our new governance team by mid-March. Just um, for... Bill, um, yes. what mailing list? The CNF working group mailing list. Um, Taylor, do you have a link to that off the top of your head? I'm, I'm just thinking if we have a mailing list, it probably ought to be at the top of this document just to make that. It should be in the readme. Good catch. We will. I'll. I'll drop it at the top. Yeah, I think it is. In the, uh, it's in the main oh yeah. readme. You're right. Sorry. But I'm, You're okay. right. It's right here. Um, right. But I'll also add it in the meeting notes too. Sorry. Um, so if you aren't a part of that, I encourage you to join it. <laughs> if you have any problems joining, like please feel free to reach out to me. Um, obviously. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the rough timeline. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, um, so look forward to that uh, PR and email coming in later this week. Um, and then we do have 23 minutes left. I just wanted to I didn't have a ton of time to like prep, but in case anybody wanted to dive into any of the discussions, I see <laughs> Ian, thank you for adding the discussion so quickly. Uh, and Taylor, I guess this is how it looks in the discussion in case you were wondering. Um, was there any discussion topics that somebody wanted to talk or was there anything that I missed on the agenda? Otherwise, we can also end the meeting early. Um, so actually, let me let me talk about that pull request, because one thing did come up when I put it in. I mean, discussion pull request doesn't really matter how you put it. Fine, we've got template. Um, the template's not finished, so it's not committed to the template. But I think it did tell me a couple of things about um, how we should be putting it together. If um, yeah, and I put a git ignore in because, you know, we need to get ignore, but setting that aside. Um, the um, one thing I found myself doing here, and I don't know whether it's the right thing or not, is the use case. And, and this is a use case because it's describing a function, not a person's behavior. Um, it, it basically highlights a bunch of shortcomings that I've expressed in terms of if I deployed Kubernetes out the box with a CNI, these are the things I would struggle to do. Um, I don't know whether that's the right place to put it or not. Did anyone have any thoughts on how we might want to organize this? Seems like it's a good thing to put in, but it's not technically the use case. I mean, if anything, if, if you feel like it's additional reference material, you could always add a section for additional context. And yeah. 
the, the thing is, it seems like it's the thing you want in the main document, um, in the sense of you really do want someone to basically read this um, as they're reading the document as well, not just read the document, go away happy, um, assuming it's all going to work. But, um, you know, and there's two parts to it. One is it could potentially change over time if Kubernetes get better. The other is if we're measuring this up against a platform definition of some variety, then um, if our platform definition changes, if we say, well, our platform is not base Kubernetes, obviously it's base Kubernetes plus these features, then that would change the um, change the results slightly. I don't know. I'm I'm asking. I, I don't have a great answer to this one, but. It's a, it's really a question on you know requirements design split. So here, here's a use case, and the use case raises a bunch of work items or a bunch of issues, however you like to define it. All right. Well, if no one's got a comment, then it will stay as it is for the time being, and um, uh, we will work on the assumption that that's the right thing to do. Um, if anyone wants to pick on that, then again, there is both a discussion and a pull request. Um, you can you can put your thoughts in there later and we'll decide how to, how to react. Cool, yeah, so thanks for that. And obviously, as Ian said, there's the discussion on the pull request, so add your thoughts. Um, is there anything anybody else wants to go over today? Otherwise, I think we can all have 20 minutes back. So thanks everyone for joining today. Cheers. Cheers, bye. Cheers, everyone. Thanks everyone.